Hi, I'm Thermic Man, and this is my show. From near to far, going to see it all. From downtown to out of town. From city park to national forest. From farmland to farm animals. I grew up here, so let's go. Hi, this is our 11th episode and each a free special episode of Third Town. So, Dana, how did the dairy get started? Um, my grandpa bought it in 1958, and then my dad bought it from him in 1974. We started off with one cow and seven kids, and now we have about 135 cows, and all our cows have been born and raised here. We don't buy cows, so we have grown very large. <laughs> cool! Let's bottle feed the cow. Yeah, she's a little anxious to eat, isn't she? And then hold it up like a baby's bottle. There we go. You want to hold on to the nipple because she can pull it off. Why are we feeding this cow? Um, when the cow's first born, they stay with their mom for about 24 hours. And then we take them from the mom and we put them in these little pins. These is like their uh, play pin or their crib. Mm -hmm. And we feed them a bottle twice a day with milk from their mom. Mm -hmm. And we do that because we want them to get the colostrum that their mom has for the first few days for their immune system to make them healthy. Mm -hmm. And we keep them, they start walking when they're an hour old. So we keep them these little pins to keep them safe. And this one loves to drink. <laughs> milk. Milk. The same milk we drink. Uh, well, this is milk, raw milk. It's not pasteurized or homogenized. This is milk straight from the mom. <laughs> we could drink it if we wanted to, but raw milk don't taste very good. <laughs> 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 and this is a half gallon of milk, and she can drink the whole half gallon in about two minutes, as you can tell. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all gone. I think we're sucking air. Let me see. Let's pull it out and check it out here. Yeah, see, it's all gone. The orange tag in her ear, the 515, instead of naming the baby cows or the cows, we number them. That means that was our fifth cow born in 2015. So, oh. so the last two numbers is the year they were born in. The other number is what order they were born in. Yeah. And then these other, she's about three weeks old, almost a month old. The three babies over here are three days old. You want to walk over here? Yeah. So you'll see them all um, scratching on the post or a piece of metal right there. They'll be itching their ears behind it. Hi, girl. She's uh, three days old. Three days, wow. Mm -hmm. Hello, girl, aww. How many baby cows are born a year? Well, it all depends. <laughs> we artificially inseminate every two months. So about every two months we get babies. Sometimes we get six babies. Sometimes we get 10 babies. Sometimes they're all girls. Sometimes they're all boys. So it just depends. Um, we keep all the girls, obviously, because they make milk and boys don't. Mm -hmm. um, we sell the bulls. We sell them to um, the auction. And we just keep the girls. So some, like right now, in one week, we've gotten three baby girls. Cool! And our new addition out there, our baby cat that was just born this morning, and I don't know if it's a girl or a boy yet. What time was the newborn born today? Um, sometime this morning, I'm not sure exactly what time, but we got done milking at 8, so it must have been after 8 o'clock this morning. Wow, that wasn't too long ago. Nope. How do you tell them from a boy and a girl, bullet from a heifer? Well, when they're really small, firstborn, it's kind of hard to tell because the umbilical cord makes it look like they're all boys. But my dad is good at telling which one is which. When they go to the bathroom, you can tell which one's a boy and which one's a girl. Oh! And then after a couple of days, it becomes obvious if they're a boy or a girl. Oh, because that's when they're being potty yeah, trained? The, yeah, and the umbilical cord falls away, so then you can tell. So how long till they walk? They start walking within the first hour that they're born. Wow! She was standing up just a few, he, she was standing up just a few minutes ago already trying to walk. Wow! How do you get your baby cow? 
Well, let me start off by saying we have about 135 cows, and out of all those cows, only two are bulls. We don't keep the bulls because we really don't need them. We artificially inseminate our cows. The vet comes out every two months, does a pregnancy check. The ones that aren't pregnant, we artificially inseminate. After two times, if they don't get pregnant through artificial insemination, we put them back in the pen with the bull and then let the bull try it. Um, <laughs> if the cow has a tag that just has a whole number on it, like 65 or 85, that means that was a cow that it's a full bred and it was born from our bull. Cool! Out of 135 cows, we milk about 75. So our first two pens up there are our milking cows. This is pen number three. The cows in this pen are either not two years old yet and haven't had a baby, or they're in their last two months of pregnancy and they're on maternity leave from the barn. So obviously that big one right there is pregnant. She'll be having a baby this week or next week. Wow! This one is either pregnant with her first baby or isn't, hasn't gotten pregnant yet. She's 10, 13, so she's probably getting ready to... And this is the bull right here, and he's a little jealous because we're here <laughs> messing with his girlfriends. <laughs> trying to lick the camera. <laughs> How much do they eat and what do they eat? Um, each cow eats about 50 pounds of hay and grain a day. They eat alfalfa hay and then a grain um, and they drink about 30 gallons of water a day. Cool! What age are they weaned? Um, when the cow is first born, for about the first three weeks we feed them a bottle twice a day, with a half, so a gallon of milk a day. Then after about a month, we move them into the next pen and we introduce them to water, grain, and hay. And then after two months, they just drink water and eat hay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, one of these bales of hay right here is about 100 pounds. So two cows eat about one of these a day. Between cool. Grain. When do they get to eat? Well, cows pretty much eat all day long. Like you were telling me before, they have four stomachs. So it takes them about eight hours to digest their food. So right now we feed them about seven o'clock in the morning. They'll eat this food till probably 11. They'll take a little rest. They'll come back and start eating again. And then we'll feed them again tonight about seven. So they're pretty much eating all day long. Cool. Eating or sleeping. <laughs> so Dana, where are we right now? Right now we're in the barn where we milk the cows. We milk them twice a day, every day, at four in the morning and four in the afternoon. So that's what time you milk them, that's cool. Very early. Yep, and very early. I don't get up that early. Do <laughs> you milk them by hand or do you use a machine? We use this machine right here to milk them. Oh. It would take too long to milk 75 cows by hand. Yeah. <laughs> so you wanna know about how we milk them? Yeah. All right. So at four o'clock in the morning, the milker goes out, gets all the cows. He brings them up this alleyway right here to our right, and he puts them in this pen right here behind the barn. We milk 12 cows at a time. We milk six on this side and six on that side over there. Oh. Let me set this down for a minute. So the cows will come in through here, and they'll go right here. See the big openings right here? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. They put their heads in, and see on the other side right here? That's grain. They love to come in the barn because they get to eat grain. That's like their dessert for the day, their grain. Mm -hmm. So they'll start eating their grain, we'll wash them up, and then we use these machines to milk them. Cool. Can I milk you today? No, I'm too young. <laughs> <laughs> it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to milk 12 cows. Oh. Every time we milk a cow, they give us about five gallons of milk. Cool. Do they like being milked or not? Yes, they do. Aww. <laughs> you seen the cow out there that just had a baby? Mm -hmm. And her udder was so big, right? Mm hmm So she loves to come in the barn and get milk so her udder will get small again. Oh. When you have babies, you'll understand. Yeah. <laughs> this is what they used to milk the cow. So what do we do when the cow comes in? The cow comes in and the milker hooks this machine to the cow's udder. 
So the udder has four teats coming out. We hook the machine like this, and it hangs like this. If I, <laughs> if I was a cow, this hose down here would be white, filling up with milk. The milk would come through here, go through this hose, into this big pipe right behind you. See the pipe right here? Yeah. Okay. Right now, it's just like a vacuum cleaner. Right now, it's not very strong, but kind of go like this. Feel, put your hand flat. Watch my hand like this. Feel the suck on there. Kind of suck. Mm. So the cow's udder is kind of shaped like your thumb. So the cow's udder goes like this. Yeah. And it sucks the milk out. So if you're a cow right now, it'd be all white right here, and the hose would be filling up with milk because it'd be sucking the milk out of your thumb. It feels like your hand being stuck to a vacuum cleaner. And this is what the cow eat. This is the grain that we feed the cows when we milk them. Milk, I mean. Get them. This is the grain that we feed them when they're getting milked. And they love this grain. It's like cereal, their dessert for the day. It's got corn. See the corn? Mm -hmm. It's got cotton. These are cotton seeds. If you went home and planted those in the dirt, you could grow cotton. This is an almond husk. Mm -hmm. There's oats, barley, molasses, almonds, all kinds of good stuff to make them healthy. And that's our whole secret. If we feed our cows good food, we get good milk. If we feed them junky food, we get junky milk. So we feed them good food and they give us good milk. Yeah! Okay, ready to follow where the milk goes next? Mm-hmm. All right. When the milk comes out of the cow, it's 101 degrees hot. We have to cool it down. When it goes into this tank right here, we cool it down to 39 degrees because we like cold milk, right? Yeah, not hot milk. Not hot milk. That's like hot chocolate. Yep. This used to be our plant where we bottled the milk at. See how small the tank is? Mm -hmm. That was all our milk. Now we have two tanks and they go all the way into the other room. They hold much more milk. And as you can see right here, whoops, this tank is halfway full. Can you see in there? Can you kind of boost up? See it all in there? Okay. Got it? Yeah. Go see all the milk? Yes, I do see. Oh, yeah. That's so cool. Yep. This milk is full to the top. And see all that cream floating on top? Mm hmm. Is that for ice cream? Uh, no, nope, just milk. That's all the cream on, on top. So, the milk comes out of the cow, goes through those pipes and hoses into these tanks. The next step is when we process the milk. It goes from the tanks into our creamery where we're going to go next. All right. The raw milk is stored here, and then it's processed next door. So, Dana, tell us how you bottle the milk. Well, after the milk comes out of the cow, it comes into the tanks right up here. See the big tanks up top here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me tell you a little bit first. At our dairy, we just make milk. We don't make um, cottage cheese or sour cream or ice cream, so we're not removing any of the cream to make those items. We just make milk, whole milk, and 2%. The 2% cream we take out of our low-fat milk, we put into our chocolate milk. <gasps> so our chocolate milk is very rich and creamy. We don't add anything to our milk. We don't take anything out of our milk. We don't give our cows any hormones. All we do is pasteurize and homogenize our milk. Right here is your pasteurizer. The milk comes down to the tank, goes through your pasteurizer. Your pasteurizer heats the milk up to 161 degrees for 15 seconds. That's real hot, right? 161 mm -hmm. degrees. When the milk's real hot, that cooks away all the germs and bad bacteria that's in your milk. Mm -hmm. Then we cool it back down to 39 degrees and it pumps through these pipes to this machine, and this is your homogenizer. Remember we looked at the milk in the tank and the cream floated on top in big chunks? Mm -hmm. All your homogenizer does is shakes that milk up really good and makes it smooth, so it steers up all the cream in your milk. Cool. Yeah. Then, after that, it goes through this pipe into this machine. Cool. My grandpa bought this machine in 1958 when they used to put milk in glass bottles. We still use it today but we put it in plastic. Cool. I'm gonna show you how it works, okay? Now I'm gonna see how the bottling machine works. Um, there's water in it today, not milk. So pretend it's milk, and I'll show, whoops, I'll show you how it works. Now it's gonna go around. Hopefully I put enough water in there to fill one up. Okay, so see they're filling up? Pretend it's filling up with milk. The 
Let me show you how the cap goes. Let me make sure it works right. Yep, there goes the cap. And now it's going to push it on. Do you sell milk anywhere else but your own store? Nope, just here at D. John's Dairy is the only place you can get our milk. Do you sell ice cream here? We sell ice cream here. <laughs> Remember when I met with Molly Hurtado in episode one at Rancho Vectacomy? Well, here I am again. To see the what new animals she had. Yeah. Welcome. Donkey first? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go see the donkey. The donkey the donkey is about uh, four years old. Mm-hmm. And uh, his his wife his partner mm -hmm. is at a ranch having a baby. Yeah, that's cool. You are yeah. recording, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so uh, he's a little bit uh, anxious. It's okay. You want to be back? Just to tell him to be? We have some emus on that side and we have an ostrich. Mm-hmm. That's the male over there. That's the partner. And then he's got two girls. <laughs> okay. And uh, the emus are quite famous for the emu oil that comes from their feathers. Oh. And uh, there's also a little bit of reading on them. They're, uh, I believe they lay about uh, 12 eggs a year. Cool. And, yeah. But they're big. We'll show you a picture of one um, inside. We have a couple of them inside. Okay. They have no more out here. And the, uh, and the emu eggs are green, a very dark, dark green. That's so cool. Yeah, and the ostrich lays a big white egg. Big mm -hmm. white egg. Like one egg is probably a little over a dozen of eggs. Mm-hmm. Equivalent. Mm -hmm. And the ostrich is about the same. She lays about uh, also 12 eggs, about 12 eggs a year. Mm -hmm. The baby chicks, those are Rhode Island Reds on the other side, and they're about a month old. Oh, okay. These guys are called uh, white rocks. The white rock lays a brown egg. These are beautiful chickens, big chicken. Cool. He's right there. Hi, kitty. Oh, yes. I'm a nice girl, aren't I? Oh. Oh. Oh.
We're here at the Geeth and we're gonna give them some bread as a treat. What kind of bird do you have here and where did you get these birds? Um, we have peacocks, ducks, turkeys, pigeons, doves, um, some chickens over there it looks like, a rooster. You knew the name of that one, was it the pheasant? Very beautiful, huh? Mm -hmm. See the male peacocks over there are the ones with the pretty feathers. We got three males and we got um, one, two females. Why are the two female peacocks? The one right over there by the fence, without see it eating by the fence, and the one right here. Oh! The peacock, the male bird, the one with the pretty eyes, and then the pea hen are just playing. Yep. When it comes to birds, I think all the males are the pretty ones. <laughs> they have the pretty feathers, and the girls are, don't have yeah. no pretty feathers, huh? Yeah. And yeah, they're gorgeous, huh? They're pretty colors. Did you know that Discovery compared that to men's um... mustache, beard? Mm hmm. Yep. Isn't that interesting? Yep. And in about August, uh, about August, July, end of July, beginning of August, they'll start losing their feathers. Is it time to give them some bread? It sure is. Uh, I give it to my chicken. You want to tear it up into little pieces. And you can throw it out there to them. There we go. See? This pea hen is interesting. See, if you come on. I'm having fun today. Isn't this cool? Well, this is your favorite part. This is the Dion petting the area, and this is where people come to visit the animal. Dana, tell us about the goats and sheep. Well, we got all kinds of goats and sheep, and once again, they're all animals that people have given us. We haven't bought any of them. People didn't want them anymore. They were moving somewhere, and they couldn't take them, so they gave them to us. And the people that come and visit our petting zoo feed them for us. They're very popular, like this little guy right here. Aww. <laughs> are these boys or girls? Um, I think these are all boys. Um, these are pretty much boy. Yep, see? Come here. Come here. Even that short one, the boy? I think they're all boys. That's a boy. They don't, that's a girl right there, the brown one. And that black one right there, those ones are girls. Is the brown one the pregnant? Boys. No, none of them are pregnant. Oh. They just look pregnant. Hi. <laughs> Are the goats just here for the kids? Yeah, they're just here for people to visit them. We don't milk them or anything. Um, mostly they're all boys. We do have two girls. But they're just here for people to enjoy. Aww. Do they have names? Um, everybody names them their own names, so we don't name them. We just let the people name them. Aww, they're cute. Mm. The goats are cute. Do you use the, oh. What about the sheep and the goat? The sheep and their wool. Um, right before summertime, probably um, when it starts getting warm, we'll, the man will come out and he'll shear them for us. And um, he takes the wool. He uh, pretty much, their wool's kind of dirty. But he'll take the wool. So we um, usually just shave them once a year, right before summertime. When it gets hot during the winter time, of course, they keep their wool so they can stay warm. Sheepy, sheepy. Come on, come on, goody. Tell us about the guinea pig, Dana. Um, obviously, we have a lot of them. <laughs> they have babies very quickly. You can mm. see we have two little babies right there. Um, I think they're about a week and a half old. They are they, are the babies boy or girl? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what they love grass. They're cute, and I could be standing back there far away with carrots, and they'll smell them and they'll start saying, making oh, that's that noise. So cool. Yeah, they love grass. We put grass to the fence. <laughs> They're cute. They all got cute little personalities, huh? Yep. Oh, there's my lawn. We feed ours mostly um, rabbit pellets, which is um, hay pellets. Mm hmm. And um, I give them grass and then carrots and lettuce they like. We give them a little mixture. They're really friendly, huh? Thank you, Dana and Dijon Farm for teaching us where milk comes from today. You're welcome. Remember what Easter is really about.
Thank you. Bye.